<clears throat> Good morning! Hi Cubies and Newbies, I am Sunshine and this is the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. Formula A is four moves, it's right there. Uh, you hold the, your cube as if it were a, and look, hold your cube in, in your hands, look at the front of the face as if it were a spreadsheet with rows and columns and the arrows represent the single slice that you're going to move on the cube and the rest the lines represent the rest of the cube. So for each formula for formula one there's one row one column you use for formula B there's one row and two columns that you use and uh, with that you can solve every complexity Rubik's cube the the formula A is used to bring a piece to the, a, cor a corner piece to the top or any piece if it's the first layer but you can't use a past the first layer so a corner piece to the top or the absolute center uh, moving to the from the front from the front to the top so uh, and formula B it moves three pieces around and only three pieces around and with that and the the columns the piece that you want to move dictates what two columns are um, and you just follow you apply formula B to the one piece that you want to move and it places itself uh, do, 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 and that's all you need to do works on every complexity Rubik's cube no matter the the uh, even the some of the banding ones I don't know about shapeshifters I'm not, shapeshifters are not my friend yet, <laughs> so, <laughs> but it also works on every complexity minks. Formula A brings a piece into place, and formula B moves three pieces around. Uh, the only, the, the only difference between the minks and the cubes as far as the ABQ, hi, hi agent, how are you doing? <laughs> The only difference in com between the, the, as far as the ABQ method between the cube and the minx is concerned is that the cube can have a parity uh, and the minx cannot and the minx, uh, will, if you, one of your columns is the center column, will have ancillary movements meaning that it, move, it moves the three pieces you want to move but it also moves other pieces as well. Uh, parity is a lie, can be undone in a single quarter turn and poof it's gone. So you don't have to memorize parity algorithms, you don't have to play with them unless you want to, because they can be fun. And with formula A and formula B, you can solve every complexity a cube. I have not tried the pyramids yet, and if there's another, because I don't have my hands on one, and if you have another puzzle you want me to try, uh, refer it to me, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. But it does work on, on it works on you know, the void cube, works on every other cube, this is this is one of my favorite toys. Uh, this is the Whitty in three by three by nine. Focus, come camera, you can do it. Whitty in three by three by nine, <clears throat> and uh, it does. Like I said, it, it solves this complex this as well with a minor adaptation. So. Uh, this is not a speed solve method. This is not the fewest moves method. This is very, uh, very monotonous, very clunky. But it only uses two formulas. It's very easy to learn. When I t when I teach real time, total teach time under two hours, and then they know that they can they walk away with any with any with uh, a larger cube. <clears throat> they know they can pick up any complexity cube and put it down solved. Uh, because it's a pleasure to see you again. Oh, thank you so much. It's, uh, thank you for chatting with me. Thank you for saying hi. <laughs> Who all do we have here right now? If you've just joined me, I am Sunshine, and I'm the creator of the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. Uh, and so, let's get into it. Earlier this week, I, I, I've been working on this cube. I've been doing it in, step, in stages. Uh, the, I have been starting, I start with the center, uh, for the cubes, I work outside in. For the for the minxes, I work inside out, because um, when you the star pieces affect other pieces, so you want to do the star pieces before the non-star pieces. So I d I've done the center, the center star pieces. I've done the center non-star pieces, and then I've done the everything, all the pieces you can see on this cube, uh, which is the star tips and the corners. I've got those done. And so the only thing left to do on this one is the edges, the edge pieces, which are, of course, just formula B over and over and over again. This one has the corners done, uh, but not the edge pieces, not the centers. So I can, I can demonstrate the edge pieces on both of these if I, if I, if I want to. Uh, for the, for this one, 
For, for this one, I, you can, like, like I said, you can use Formula A to, to, to affect one face, but only one face. You already have the centers done. Very well. Oh, for the minks? For, I have the absolute center in place. I don't have the centers here, but I have the centers done on the minks. I do the centers before I do the edges. Yes, I do. Um, just because there's so many pieces, and so uh, when I'm doing the centers, it's easier if I can just have free reign of the faces, because there's so many faces. But I can do these centers last, uh, as a last step as well. It's just, it's just there's more setup to make the movements and then, and then reset. <clears throat> so I go outside in for the cube, inside out for the minxes. And so what's left here are the edge pieces. And I kind of go layer by layer on the minx because it's there's so many more faces than this one than this one has. So I kind of go layer by layer. So and I start with white uh, because the white ha has all of the familiar colors around it. So I've got the, I've divided the cube visually into the whites and the bold colors which are offset the grays and the pastels. So I go layer by layer. I'm going to start with white. And I look to see where the whites are first. Excuse me. Okay, I like to see where the whites are first. If there's anything anything on the on the layer next to them, then those could be easily placed. <coughs> uh, here is here's a white. Nope, oh, that's not in the right place. Okay, all right. So nothing convenient on the bottom. So let me look at the top. So I'm just fine looking for a white edge piece, wherever it is. Here's one. Okay, uh, this one wants to go all the way on the other end of the, of the side. I can do it in jumps if I want to, or no. Okay, the cube is, wait, the, that cube is difficult. Are you talking about the minx? The minx is not difficult. The minx could, can be difficult, just like the cube can be difficult, but both the cube and the minx can be solved with my, my AB formula. Do you want more demonstration on, do you want demonstration on the minx or on the cube? How? How to please you. <laughs> Is there any part of what I've already done that you'd like me to talk over again? Because everything here I can teach inside of two hours. an age of five years. Because <laughs> that's the thing with, with the AB method, AB cube method, um, none of them are difficult. We, we break, we've broken all of them down to the, the just the, the basic building blocks of what is going to, what, how the cube works. And so anyone can learn them. You have a five by five. Okay. I'm assuming that you, that you know, you have tamed it. Uh, do you have the minx, or do you are you interested at all in the minxes? Because I can talk over, I can redo any one of these. I can talk over them again. I can demonstrate how the pieces move. Um, this is what it looks like if you've moved the center pieces. Uh, so for here. <coughs> I moved this I moved this I moved these three pieces around and in so doing it had to had ancillary movement as well. I can fix those ancillary movements uh, with that by, by themselves, but I cannot move the star pieces without moving other parts of it as well. You have a five by five but you don't know how to recover it. You don't know how, you, you haven't tamed it yet. you can't put it down solved yet. All right. well, what is your question? how how much can you? Because I can start again with this. Um, also, take it. Also, take some time if you want to to go to apcube.how or speed uh, youtube.com slash at speedsolve at abcube method. 
Um, but the corners are done using formula A and formula, everything's done using formula A and formula B. Uh, what do you know how to fix on your cube? How much of your cube can you intuit on your 5 by 5 Or, if, or if you're busy doing other things and don't want to take time to chat with me, uh, we can, I'd be happy to set up uh, training with you on Friday evenings or Saturday mornings or at what, anything like that. If you want to, if you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, we can arrange that. Do you, so is, is now, if now is not a good time to dive into it, I can just demonstrate stuff. But <laughs> nothing is more fun for me in the world than taking someone who doesn't not know how to do the cube and showing them how, how, how simple it is. Uh, this is not like I said, it's not a speed solve method, and so it's it certainly, but it's very, it's, a, it's your ABCs, it's a beginning step. Um, if so, with this method, you can pick up whatever your cube is and put it down solved, and then from a solved cube, you can do the algorithms you want to learn, and you can see what movements the algorithm does. So the three by three, you more, okay. Um, all right, hit me up if you're interested. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a uh, Zoom channel. We could we could live interact, uh, maybe maybe Friday evening or Saturday, uh, any Friday evening or Saturday. I've got it set up. So just uh, just drop me a line, and we can you can help me demonstrate. It'll be so much fun for both of us. <laughs> so you 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 kind of have have tamed the three by three, but for more than that, you're still you're still trying to figure it out. That's exactly where I was when I sat down <laughs> and created this method. <laughs> so, the 5 by 5 where's my 3 by 3 One looks more complicated, um, and with uh, other people will tell you that it is. But what I'm telling you is that the, it's not more complicated, it just has more different types of cubes on it but every single cubie can be manip manipulated the exact same way. So um, <laughs> when other people say, oh, is this harder? Than, how much harder is this than this? Um, other people will say, yes, it's harder. But I, but I will tell you that the 5x5 five five is no more difficult than the 3x3. Three three. I teach both of them in the same amount of time. And so the 5x5 five five is not more difficult. Here's the thing. Here's how, the, here's how it breaks down. I have a two by two, has only corners. And the corners in my method are solved with formula A and formula B. Formula A brings a corner color to the top face. Formula B looks at it and says, oh, these ones don't match, so let's move these around. And then formula A brings the color back to the top. Flip it upside down, do the exact same thing again. So once, you, so you, once you've done the corners on this one, you can do the corners on this one or this one or anything else, so the corners are easily solved. Also, once you can do the corners, you've already learned formula A and formula B, and everything else is just more of formula B. So this has the corners. When you move to the 3x3, three three, you have an absolute center and absolute edges. And those are also, those, the edges can also be solved by formula B. And the center, if it's off, if it's off, can be solved with formula A, out, down, and up. So everything that you can do on this, you can do on this, and everything that you can do on this, once you go to a larger cube, where's my four? I don't see where my four by four is. Once you go to larger cubes, um, you can name the cubes different things. It still has the corners, are still the same. Uh, but this one, instead of having an absolute center, has diagonal centers, and instead of having an absolute uh, edge, has uh, edges that, uh, and you can, each one of these edge pieces, each one of these pieces uh, can also be moved about with formula B, so it's not really any more difficult to move this piece to here, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, as it is to move this piece to here. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Okay, so the same thing that moves this piece here moves this piece here. The edges are you can treat the edges the exact same thing, and then um, the centers can also be moved with formula B. 
and it doesn't really matter how many centers you have uh, it's just it takes you know you just pick each piece and, and move it so the 4x4 four four is not so even though there's we call the pieces by different names like this is an absolute center and these are diagonal centers um, this one has the corners the absolute has everything the 3x3 three three has and everything the 4x4 four four has and has some extra pieces but all of these, pe all of the other center pieces that you have, the edge pieces are still placed the same way, and all of the edge the center pieces, the the, uh, the absolute center is placed with A. But every other center piece, regardless of whether it's a diagonal or an oblique, is still going is going to be placed with formula B. And as you get larger and larger, nothing else changes. You 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 haven't added any new type of cube, so you can't even pretend it's getting more difficult. But since every piece on the cube can be moved with formula A and formula B and y it's just a matter of picking the piece that you want to move and applying the formula to that piece which affects three pieces and only three pieces so no the 5x5 five five is not more difficult than the 3x3 three three. it just takes a little bit longer a little bit more of the same uh, the 2x2 two two and the 3x3 three three. okay so you know how to do the, these ones um, if you add to your to your method bank, method memory bank, um, if you add the ABQ method to the way you solve you, you, you solve your cubes, then you can solve every complexity cube. And then, if you want to be a speed solver, once it's solved, you can practice your algorithms on the solved cube, so you can see visually exactly what every algorithm you want to work with is doing. And so that's it's easier. It's easier to see what it's doing from a solved cube than from a scrambled cube. Hi! Thank you for saying hi. Hi, Cammy. Um, nope, not going to try to pronounce it. Hi! <laughs> so, if, you've j if you're just joining me, let's see who's here. If you've just stumbled on me and found me and don't know who I am, uh, I am Sunshine. I'm the creator of the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. Uh, it's two simple two formulas formula a is four moves formula b is eight moves <laughs> hello little is that a dry dinosaur dinosaur yeah um okay so formula a is four moves for every left there's a right for every up there's a down formula b is eight from eight moves so it's the same thing so it's a low move it's not low move count and it's it is it's very high movement move count actually um, but for me, it's simpler uh, because, okay, if I, if I have three pieces that want to move, um, I don't have, I look at, I, I can look at it and say, oh, do they want to move clockwise or do they want to move counterclockwise? If they want to move clockwise, I'll do this one. If they want to move counterclockwise, I'll do that one. By the time it takes my head, me and my head to figure out whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, So um, by the time it takes me to figure out which, which algorithm to use, I could have just done formula B, and if it wasn't already solved, then formula B again, and it would have been. So it's not fewest move, but for me, it's, it's, it's faster in my head than looking to see which algorithm is going to work best for me in this situation. So, um, and so it's not fewest moves. It's not, it's not sh fastest. Uh, I do have... <laughs> I do have a friend who is a speed cuber, but fun, but f likes the fewest moves method. Um, and, but what the <laughs> he did, he was afraid of all cubes before I got to him. <laughs> um, so what it, all this all this, what this does is takes anybody. It's three. Is it similar to a three by three style? Uh, this is I. I don't think it's not similar to. <sighs> um. You can learn it and tell me what you think it's similar to. I have been told that it is similar in similar to the uh, Verasana method from back in the, was popular back in the 80s because of this guy right here. Jeffrey Verasana was the first person to set the cube, and his, his method he uses his method is um, he uses a lot of out of um, commutators and. He, but he does. His mind is so far above mine, though. <laughs> so brilliant. Um, 
so so they said, oh, your cube is very similar to the Verasano. So I looked it up and like, oh, he's the guy I watched on TV. Said, <laughs> he, he intimidated me so badly. <laughs> um, so it's similar to the Verasano method, uh, but it's it's not it's the order of operations. I do the corners first, then I do the edges, and then because the corners dictate what color the side's going to be. Uh, we used to work around the absolute center, but that one that became less necessary as soon as we created the four by four. So, m as far as order of operations for the cube, I do the corners, then the edges, and the centers, and I ignore parodies because they're a lie. You don't have to play with them. So, um, formula A brings piece to the top. Formula B moves three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do because parodies <laughs> are pretend. And uh, so I do the centers last uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is because I've got my, cor my corners and edge slices there to help me keep me track of which column I'm working on if I move to if I'm on a larger cube and I get distracted in between. So yes, once you, once you learn it for the 4x4, four four, it works on every complexity cube. Uh, you know, there's, there's a gajillion ways out there to learn the 3x3. Three three. Um, and then... But once you get past that, most of the methods for other things, they're like, you use, add these algorithms in. It's not a speed solve method. But so you add the, but, but like I said, it will get you to a solve cube so you can then look at what your algorithms are doing and figure out which algorithms you want to use and for what. Um, but it, so it's not a, not a speed method. But if you can solve, yeah, this, this will help you. This will, if you can solve, a, if you can, yes. This method will absolutely help you. And if you ever want, if you want one-on-one -on -one time with me, I am set up to teach. I have a Zoom. I've, I have a Zoom classroom that I can teach up to four people at a time. I forgot the parody algorithm because I'm too lazy to relearn them. Okay, parody. You don't need a parody algorithm. You don't need them at all ever because a parody is a lie. Uh, parody is where it looks like there's two pieces and only two pieces that need to be switched and all of the algorithms the except for the parity algorithms all the other the formula b will move three pieces around and only three pieces but if you only have two pieces then parity b doesn't help you but here's the deal you never have two pieces and only two pieces every parity whatever it looks like whatever whatever there's lots of algorithms you can learn for it a parity is always caused by one thing and one thing only it's caused by the center being a quarter turn off, like so. It's caused by the center being a quarter turn off. Uh, I took a parity algorithm. I took a couple of parity algorithms. I wrote them down on a piece of paper, treated them like an algebraic equation, and for every left up on one side of the equation and left down on the other side of the equation, I said these two cancel each other out, and I can I crossed them off. And so I looked at the algorithm and narrowed it down to what it actually is is you've got this big old long complex thing to set up something and then you have a single single quarter turn in the middle of it and then you you reverse what you did to get to the end that they're always like that and so um at the same time i was learning that my oldest had my had my void cube and was playing with it and he got to a point and he said wait a minute that's illegal that can't happen how did that happen oh the center's off I don't know how to fix the center. And he put it down. <laughs> and I'm like, that's it. They blinked in my head. The center is a quarter turn off. No matter what the parity looks like, the center is a quarter turn off. So if you take that quarter turn, if you take the line, the, the layer that touches your parity, void cube parity is silly. If you touch the, if you take the line, the layer, the slice that touches your parity, whether it's, an, whether it's these two pieces want to switch or these two pieces want to switch or these two pieces, it doesn't matter what it looks like. The layer that touches your parity is a quarter turn off. Make that uh, make a quarter turn. Resolve your edges from that situation, and the parity has disappeared. Poof, it's gone. And you, if you've done centers first, you want to reset them, which is why I do centers last. So parodies can be fun to play with, but you don't have to. They're a lie, and I don't teach my newbies my how to do the parodies because. <laughs> Why memorize an algorithm that you're only going to use, uh, what, 40% uh, of the time? 40% um, of the time for each cube, 
but not for each thing. So I just I just do not teach the parity algorithm. Parity algorithm quite simply is just a single quarter turn, keep going. So um yeah. <laughs> I'm too lazy to learn algorithms. I got formula A, formula B, that's all I need. I can do whatever I want with just formula A and formula B. I can solve every cube, I can solve every minx. Uh, if there's I can solve my three by nine with just formulas A and B. So it's not it's not a speed solve method, but it, it it's cheaper, it's more speed efficient for me because my brain doesn't it has to take a minute to to look at does it, which way is which way is clockwise, which way is counterclockwise. Your mega minx you just treat like a three. Okay. Yeah. Um this this is the, this is the mega. This is the gig giga. Cluttering up my workspace. So yeah. Um, okay, the last layer, the last layer, is formula A and formula B. Okay. Um, the the difference between this and this is that this one has an order of operations. Okay. So when you get to the last layer. Uh, when you work on the star parts, when the star tip, which is on the last layer, when you move, when you set, okay, formula B uh, is going to move three pieces around, but it's also going to move other pieces around. So let's pretend that I'm looking at the top layer here. Okay, well, I am looking at the top layer. Okay, so, um, uh, when, uh, solve the big, the, the gigaminks, solve this one. Okay, um, do you want me to scramble any of it? So far, I've done I've done the, sem the the star parts already, so the star parts. But doing the star part, let me show you. If I do formula B, it's it's one row, two columns. But if one of the columns is the star parts, it's going to have ancillary movement. It's going to move more than just the three pieces up, up, down, down. Okay, so I did formula B. This is my first column. This is my second column, and this piece moved from here these three pieces moved, but these corner pieces also moved. So whenever you work on the star parts, the other pieces also move. So if you solve the star parts first, then you can work on the other pieces without worrying about them because uh, you can move the non-star parts three pieces only, but if you move the star parts, it you moves the three pieces, three pieces plus ancillary movements. So when I moved this arm right here, it moved these three pieces, but it gave me some ancillary movements that I have to work with, okay? When I did, when I moved these three pieces, where are you? Which pieces? When I moved these three pieces, uh, it, it moved these other pieces as well and these corners as well. So the difference between the minks and the, and so if you, if you have the star, pie, star pieces done first, then you can do the non-star pieces with just formula B and A if it needs to twist. So, um, let me go back here. So when you get to we're just the last start, just the last layer. When you get to just the last layer, um, you offset one side so that you can move these three pieces, or the, 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 you can move the three pieces that you want to move. And then once you get, so that new, fixing the last layer of the star is going to offset some of the, your corners down here. So you have to know you have to redo them, but uh, it's easier to have them solved when you get to the top point because for, for visual visual clarity. So this is this is my gigamix. So this one I've already done all the star pieces. You're gonna do a live stream? Do you want to join me? Do you want to live stream and join me? I'll, I think there's I know there's a way to include to bring people into your Twitch. But I've never done that. So, um, all right. It sounds like you're leaving, and you're the one with the questions. So, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Um, anybody that wants to to collaborate with me, set, hit me up. Let me know uh, because uh, I have a Twitch. I can I can live capture gameplay capture my Twitch stream. My, not my Twitch stream. My Zoom meeting. Uh, the people there would like would think your method is cool. Oh, on speed solving forums, uh, I am. I have a page. I have two pages. One for the method. One for me. On speedsolving.org, 
uh, and I, I, you can see the link in my bio here. Uh, I went live, I, I went on it there on 2020, that's when I published it, in 2020. So y there is a page on speedsolving.org there, and yes, I, I, let me know where you thought you think I should put it. Uh, it is also, it's also mentioned on Wikipedia, speedsolving.org must be shut down. Is it speedsolving.com? Oh, um, somebody, my message thing system held something. Someone said that uh, allow, beta allow, we'll post it to chat. I don't know what that means. Yes, I think I do mean speedsolving.com. Okay, so sp speedsolving, I think it's .com, um, has a page for me. Just uh, search for AB Cube and it'll come up. Uh, it's not in the forums, though. It's just on the main pages. There's a page for it. You'll see, you'll recognize the little the, the picture there yeah yeah it's there yay <laughs> so i am there i've been there since 2020 it, i'm also on i'm it's also on like i said wikipedia if you go to the page for the professor's cube which is what the five by five used to be called the professor's cube so if you go if you go to the professor's cube page on wikipedia scroll down to solving i'm the last paragraph on there it's there as well if there's anywhere else i should go please let me know because <laughs> All right, I have to go too. Um, I, actually, I don't have to go. I'm going to solve. I'm going to solve half of. I'm going to solve. I'm gonna, you solve the white part of the edges here, so to demonstrate how to solve them. And um, please, you know, feel free to like message, drop me a message, and let's let's uh, let's incorporate Zoom on this. I can teach up to four people at a time on Zoom. So bye, bye. Okay. So for the last layer, doing once you've got the doing the edges, the star tips is going to mess up these corners, some of these corners. But the corners can be placed without with just formula B and without messing. Once you've got the tips in place, nothing has to ever change the tips. So my tips are in place here. I was doing I'm going to do the white edges now. Okay. Um, I start it's easier to find to start looking from the from the opposite side and work work my way down. So there's no whites on the gray side, but there's a white here. So I'm going to use formula B to move this up to the top layer where I can work with it easier. So first row, second row, and I'm going to put this piece here, which will move this piece to the top. So I'll see you later. Bye. Up, up, down, down. And that put my white piece on top where I can play with it. Uh, now, like I said, my star tips are in place, but, uh, um, I'm going to offset the gray in order to get it where I want it to be. So it's white and purple, so I'm going to move it above where the white and purple are. Okay, It wants to land down here where the white and purple are, so it's above the purple. I'm going to move it down and then reset my gray side so I'm not losing my star tips. So I, I, to, instead, the way to move it down is to move it forward. So this piece I'm going to move here, and then I'm going to move here so it can then drop here. So I'm going to formula B twice on this piece, and I'm ignoring the fact that these other pieces are going to move. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and these are the three pieces that move. Okay, everything else stays the same. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Now, as I promised, I'm going to reset the gray. Okay. And now this white is where it can drop down and be right here. So again, these three pieces are going to move. This one's not right, correct, so I have no problem moving it. So these three pieces are going to move. Formula B. Uh, so this piece is going to go here, which is going to bring it forward. So again, I move it away. First up, back. Second up, away, down, back, down. Okay. And this piece is correctly placed. <laughs> Um, this piece wants to come down to the blue side, so I can offset the white to make that happen, and then bring it again, formula B, to bring this piece forward and this piece down, and then I'll reset my white. So you can either bounce it around until it gets to where it wants to be, or you can set, uh, preset, do it, and then reset. 
so this piece wants to go over here. All right, uh, here's 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 the piece on top, white piece on top. Okay, offset the gray to move it above where it wants to be. It wants to be down here. Okay, formula B to bring it forward and to the side twice. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Okay, reset my gray side and then drop it down this way. These are the three pieces that are going to move. Up, up, down, down. Okay, one, two, nothing on the side. All right, here is a, here's a white piece, nothing on the gray side. Here's a white piece that I'm gonna move, the, I'm gonna use formula B to move this to the gray side so I can work with it. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, okay, and then it's above where it wants to land, because it wants to land down here, so bring it forward and then to the side, up, up, down, down, which you could just do with the reverse of formula B, which I've never learned. <laughs> so instead of doing it tw two times, you can do the reverse, because it, it clutters my brain up. And then move this one forward. This one is correctly placed. I don't want to move it. So I'm going to, uh, this one's going to come forward to here. So I'm just going to offset the blue so I have a random space here. So I'm not, so I'm protecting my blue spot. I'm going to move it forward and then reset the blue. Okay. Uh, here's a white piece. I'm going to move it to the gray side where I can work with it. Alright, uh, it wants to be over here, so I move it above where it wants to be by offsetting my gray. Okay, it's going to land, wants to land above the green and white down here. So I'm going to bring it forward and down and reset my gray. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Reset my gray side, gray face. And then this one wants to move down, which is done by moving it forward. So these three pieces, this one will go here. Up, up, down, down. Can you guys hear me? I realized I was speaking softly. Okay, so all of my, just a quick check to see that all of my star parts are in place. Sometimes I might make mistakes here and I have to redo the star parts, but that's okay. Um, so, no whites on the gray face, no whites on the gray sides. All right, here is a blue. It wants to come here. I can bring it forward and then into that spot, okay? Or, yeah, it's already where it wants to be. Okay, so formula A, one, one B would have brought it down here, another B would have put it there where it can face down, so let's do that. So up, up down, down, oopsie, stop moving, okay, and then it wants to come forward like this, uh, and this red needs to, I, you know what, I can place this red here first, I can place this red here first, so it wants to come here, so I can do it twice by putting it here and then here, <clears throat> or I can just offset so that it will land there. So I'm going to do formula B up, up, down, down. Okay, and then reset it. And now I'll work with my, now I'll work with my blue. Actually, this one wants to go here, not here. So this one's going to get placed, displaced. But that's okay. So up, second up, down, second down. Okay. And all my, my stars correct. Looking for more white pieces. Um, okay. One. Two. Okay. Alright. This white piece wants to go here. 
So I can do that. I can either go here and then here, or I can offset and then just go there. Up, up, down, down, and then reset. And there it is. This piece wants to go here. Um, there's one, and where's the other one? Right here. Okay, this one, nope. All right, the easiest thing for me to do is to bring it to the gray side and then work with it. So, rather than go hippity hoppity everywhere. So I'm gonna bring it up to, bring it away from where it is, okay. And then bring it up to the gray side. Then I'm offsetting just the gray. So I bring it go above the purple, above the purple, bring it down into the side, forward into the side. Reset my gray face. And now this wants to come down here. This one's correct, so I'm going to offset it to put, it to put an incorrect spot there. And then I'm going to move this one forward. Up, up, down, down, reset. Okay. Um, going to move this one to the top face. To the gray side so I can work with it. Come to the dark side, Luke. We have cookies. Okay. Um, everything is still happy. I'm going to bring it forward so it's on the side rather than the top. And you can see this is not a fewest move, so this is not a speed solve method. But it is a you can get it solved method. You can pick it up, pick it up and put it down solved. It is without spending months and years of your life memorizing things. So to bring it forward, I offset the I don't I, I put a garbage piece where where it's going to land so that I don't move lose that piece. Up, up, down, down, and then reset. And so here's one last. It wants to go, it wants to land here. Up, up, down, down. Okay, so that's one face done. And everything else is just, is more of the same. I will come back to this, today's, is today Friday or Thursday? I'll come back to this next time I stream. So thank you for joining me. I know I went. <laughs> uh, thank you for letting me be part of your morning. I, I appreciate you guys. Go have a wonderful day. Be nice to yourself. And I'll be back next time. Bye.